two, one. We are live. Um, let's give, uh, damn, we already have questions. Let's give everyone a chance to, um, you know, to, to, to get, to get, uh, acclimated, get settled in and, uh, we'll get started once I, you know, see some more comments. Uh, <laughs> JB thinks this is rigged. Um, <laughs> You know, Mike would know a lot about rigging, uh, rigged NFL. Uh, the, Chiefs you know, the, look, the Chiefs did win uh, last night. So, so yeah. I think that we're going to be good. So thanks let's. For nothing, uh, thanks for nothing, Patrick Mahomes and Sammy Watkins. <laughs> Assholes. So, so let's get started with some introductions. So um, I'll go last. So, Illiterate, you want to go? Um, sure. Yeah. Um, I've been around the forum, I guess, about seven or eight years now. Um, been to been to s- several different events. This is my first Morgan Cup and uh, just excited to uh, to get to play in this thing. Finally, um, as you know, Dax and I have kind of done several of these videos. And last year, um, Chef Dax and myself covered this uh, the same event. So excited to do it again this year. Sweet. All right, Kentucky golfer. What about you? Well, uh, I joined the forum in 2013, but had some back injuries there for a couple of years and didn't get to play for two or three years. So jumped back on probably late 2017 and uh, finally started entering some uh, contests for events and stuff like that. And uh, this is my third one, I think. Yeah, it was the tightest event, the, the – budget championship and uh this is my first morgan cup as well so looking forward to it chef last but not least chef critter uh been on the forum for a few years and uh did my first morgan cup in 2018 um the best one ever and then uh did the budget golf championship where i actually finally got to meet dax and mike in person um, got rolled up on that last day. Mike cheated, <clears throat> but I told um, you we're a lunch pail kid. I mean, yeah, it's been a uh, love doing these events, and especially for the Morgan Cup. Uh, okay, my name's Jay Dax. Uh, I don't have any Morgan Cup experience, uh, but I've been around for a little while. Uh, resident odds maker extraordinaire. I also uh, lost a singles match uh, in spectacular fashion at the granddaddy a couple years ago yeah (laughs) no it's not on the teleprompter someone's gonna well preemptively before an eight and six reference comes up i will uh go ahead and uh do you know talk about that so um you know chef you mentioned while the morgan cup uh special event to you so why don't y'all uh talk about why is the morgan cup special the Morgan Cup is just, it, it's different. It's a great group of guys and the history of it with, with THP and then anybody that's been to it will tell you it's their their favorite event ever. And it, it's about the golf. It's about Cobra and Puma and being one-on-one with Yags and, and Jose. But it's just two teams going at it and to see who wants it more. I mean, it's just... It's a great group, and it's a great event. Every year, it never fails. It's just amazing, and it's it'll always be you know special place for for anyone that's in it or following it. it it's a great follow. Mike, um, yeah. So um, I guess it's about seven years ago. I posted this earlier this week, but uh, about seven years ago, I was kind of looking for uh, some more people to play some golf with and stuff. I stumbled upon THP and um, the first event that I actually, or experience, I should say that, uh, that I stumbled across was the Morgan cup and was really blown away by it. And so it's events um, that's been on my list to want to get in and, um, and, and finally, finally getting to do that. So it's just, it's really special. I know it means a lot to JB. Um, and like I say, the interaction with the with the team so far has been a lot of fun. Uh, getting to know uh, Yags a little bit uh, over the last couple months has been a lot of fun as well. 
And uh, like I say, look, looking forward to meeting, uh, you know, Team Paradise and Jose and uh, getting to know those guys this weekend as well. So it's going to be going to be a great time. And it's just a, just a special event. And it's it's named after uh, JB's wife. So um, Morgan Cup, let's get it. All right. What about you, uh, Kentucky golfer? Yeah, Mike kind of hit the nail on the head. Anytime your event's named after one of the founders, it's it's kind of a big deal. And all you really had to do is read some of the posts JB's thrown out on the forum here the last few days to know that it's it's fairly important to him. So, uh, like Mike, I'm I'm looking forward to getting there and and meeting all the guys and get this thing going. I've uh, I was selected in December of last year, so it's been a long wait. I'm ready to get it going. <laughs> awesome awesome morgan is watching uh by the way i just got uh, a message i love the morgan cup it's one of my favorites i'll answer the question i pose the question i'll answer it. it's one of my favorite events uh i love watching it mike and i uh one of the first things that i followed when i joined the forum was the morgan cup i love it um and i can't wait to follow this one um, and, and it's provided some really cool moments. There was that team that Kev was on that came back from the dead during singles and stole the cup. There was uh, the, the Team Paradise two years ago with, with Critter going 4-0. Um, so maybe y'all can uh, live up to, to some of the things that we've already seen. Speaking of, um, you know, it's got a wide – if you look at who's in the Morgan Cup this year, it's got a wide range of uh, different uh, experience levels as it relates to events. How important do each of you feel uh, THPA event experiences is in an event like this? I'll go first. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, I think it's – at the beginning, it's important to me. I mean, because you're going to have nerves there because – everybody on the forum and then some is watching it um that there's going to be jitters for the first nine holes i mean it, it's going to happen right you're going to have shots that you're like when the hell did i last time try to hit a 40 yard cut you know <laughs> off a rock um and not playing with people you haven't played before right not trying to not to let your team down um but after that the nerves settle in and you're good you're good but Nine holes, and especially on that first tee box when everybody's live watching, there's some pressure. Yeah, and uh, you know, Morgan, we, we know you, you know we love you. Um, you're not just JB's wife, um, so I've seen uh, throwing shade already. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but no, to, to answer the question, um, it, there's there's not a time that I've not stepped up on the tee and and had a little bit of that first tee nerves. But like say, I remember my first event. Um, and, you know, people like there's this group of people watching you as you tee off and it's uh, there's there's nothing like it. Um, and it's something that, you know, we see on, you know, we see guys on TV, professionals doing it with big crowds around. And then, you know, you get something a much smaller version. Um, it's just something that you really only get to experience kind of here at, at THP. But uh, there is something to be said for experience. And um, you know, I think the, the more experience you have, the quicker you can kind of settle in. For those guys that are probably new, um, that uh, this is their first event or maybe their second event, maybe they've gone to a different uh, experience where um, it's not really a competitive event or anything like that. Um, it's you know a little bit different, but there's there's definitely um, you know definitely something to be said for nerves, and I think uh, the guys that have you know the the experience will be able to settle in a little bit quicker and and hopefully um, you know stop hitting draws if they don't hit draws and you know, our hitting cuts is, uh, as chefs talked about, you know, when you don't normally hit a cut. So, uh, it'll be a lot of fun, but, uh, but yeah, THP experience, uh, or just experience in these type of events, I think plays a big factor. Yeah, I think I have to agree. I think, uh, you know, I kind of agree with chef as well. The first tee box is always really the almost uncomfortable feeling really, but, uh, that's why we go. It's a good, it's also a great feeling. I mean, it's, it's a good feeling to have as well. So uh, experience is going to matter, I think, but you know, hopefully three or four holes in, everybody can settle down and, and uh, us that have a little bit more experience uh, can help them new guys move on a little faster. Cause uh, you know, like you just posted up there, there's three, three on team paradise and we're going to need those three. So uh, hopefully uh, settle in and, make this event as fun as possible because that's what we're there for. 
I mean, you, you, you even got you even got Little Rat on here. Yeah, the Little Rat has uh, uh, Jose has made an effect. experience. That is Jose, not Jose B for the fizzle. <laughs> <laughs> He's decided the, the greatest better present. Definitely. Um, I I don't know. I mean, I think that Hackers has a little bit of the experience edge. I don't I don't know um how big of a deal it's going to be because you know in previous Morgan Cups you would start off with uh, three nine hole matches. That's what they did last year. The format we'll get to that in a second is a little bit different. Um, it opens with an eighteen hole match. It may give some of the rookies some time to settle in. Uh, rather than having them settle in and you already have points on the board, right? I mean, it, it, you know, maybe it takes them nine to get settled. Uh, and then in the older formats, uh, you could see another team um, that had more experience get out ahead or, or jump another team. I don't think that we'll see that uh, this time. I do think it's, you know, important. Uh, the, the pairings are more important than experience, in my opinion. And, um, and how these captains go about pairing uh, these guys up for mo for best success is probably um, you know going to help them handle this next question. Morgan Cup pressure. So um, we've seen some things. We've seen uh, Hague Point. Uh, what hole was that? Uh, 14, 13, uh, where people just succumb to the pressure uh, on Sunday during singles. Uh, we've seen we've seen multiple train wrecks like that happen. Um, do y'all feel any extra pressure? I know that you've been to a lot of events, uh, illiterate. This is your first Morgan Cup, uh, chef. You've played in a Morgan Cup, Strix on THP Championship, uh, Kentucky Golfer. This is your first Morgan Cup. Any extra pressure because, because uh, it's such a, a big event or such a special event to so many people? Well, I did stand on that 14th tee at Core de Aline last year and. I don't know if you can get more any more pressure than that one, so um, I don't I don't think so for me anyway. Um, for me, um, and this is not a shot at Dax or anything like that, but the 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 hole that Dax and I played against each other at the Ben Hogan event was probably the most nervous I've ever felt over standing over a golf ball and just thinking I wanted to make contact with it, just because. I mean, after you went to the range and I tried to will my team in to win. I hit four. Is that, balls. Is, that, is that the hole that you're talking about? The, the four four balls I hit on the range. Yes. Okay. Um, but you were you were on the range while I was trying to read JB Cobb's Yes or no? I was. Okay. And my, all right. Thank but, you. So, thank you. Thank and, you. Thank you. And if I remember right, uh, my guy made the putts, and uh, that, that was a good double bogey. And and we didn't uh, yeah. we didn't uh, blade a wedge 120 yards into the into the uh, the river over there. But uh, anyway. Um, that was probably the most nervous I've been over over a golf ball. It was a lot of uh, a lot of pressures on Instagram Live or whatever JB was doing with it, and uh, you know the teams that you'd been kind of leading and helped kind of work around the course and that sort of thing. It was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, Dax is definitely channeling his Chris Wallace. Or let's let, let's yeah. let, well let let's stay on pressure because I mean, are, are you arriving with any extra pressure due to maybe a neck injury? Or um, you know, totally sort of shooting ninety the last time out. Is that is that any sort of pressure? Any added pressure? The game's not really where you want it to be. Um, no, there's no pressure. Okay. All right, let's talk about the course. Let's talk about Vegas. Great course, okay. good track. No, I'm, I, no, no, I'm, I'm pulling a Chris Wallace. I'm moving to the next. I'm moving to the next thing. I mean, we weren't even talking about Ben Hogan event. Uh, and him going to the range while I was trying to will my team uh, to victory. It's a sore <laughs> subject. Um, so let's talk about the course. Chef, you played at the distance powered by Strixon on this course in a very similar format. So talk about the course um, and, and what do the, the participants have uh, waiting for? Them? So the, the course itself, and we were talking earlier, the course is totally gettable, right? It, you hit it in the fairway, hit the greens, no problem, just like any course. But once you get into that first cut of rough, slightly off, that club head starts turning a little bit, and that brings the the native areas into play, um, which I think we're going to see quite a few on. There's no water on the entire course except for 18. Um, mm -hmm. Or if you hit a tee shot on 10, like four miles right, I mean, that'd be right of Dax. Um, 
<laughs> but it, it, it's, it's totally scoreable. The short game is key in, in iron play, I think, is going to be the difference maker for this. I mean, it, there's a few short par fours where you can pound it down there and be, you know, chip in, maybe you hit it on the green, look at eagle. But five yards off, you may have an unplayable. You know, so I – I like the course setup. I think it's going to be awesome. And I think it's going to be the best part about it will be alt shot for this course. Yeah, I didn't play it. I watched it. And, and so I got to watch a bunch of different matches. I like the way the format sets up um, because I think it's a course that lends itself to longer matches. I think that, that it's a course um, that 18 hole matches are going to be great on. There's really two pockets of holes that usually decide one of those 18 hole matches. The first three holes are extremely important because you get a diabolical par three in the middle of this three hole stretch and, and three, maybe one of the tightest tee shots on the course to be in the right position. It is the one handicap. Um, so if you're a team getting pops, even in shamble, you're probably going to get uh, one on three, but you can't be really uh, two down uh, going into that. One is like one of the easiest holes on the course. Yeah, most of you are gonna. You most get above, of these guys. You get, the drop. Pin, you get above the pin on one. That's a three putt waiting to happen. The pin upon pin location, yes, but to find the fairway and to get close to the green, it's not unless you're that far left. Like you remember, uh, the animal drop kicked that uh, that tee shot and almost went into the like the range or whatever. The range is to the to the left of the one tee box. There is out of bounds, sort of all the way to the right, Mike, just just in case, because I know that you have a tendency to maybe block one every now and then. But you're not going to have to hit driver there, so it probably won't won't come into play. But hitting the green on the second hole and giving your team a chance uh, to, to maybe steal that hole, especially if you won one and then you walk into three, and if you're the team that's getting popped, you could be getting a pop there, and all of a sudden you could be three up in a match where you're the you're, you're really the underdog. Those first three holes are you have to navigate them. There's a number nine, if I remember correctly, is pretty difficult. There's a par four on the back, thirteen, where it's a blind tee shot. You have to sort of aim at this steeple, and if you're not in the right spot, good luck getting it on the green. And the the the, the last three holes um, are going to be problematic, I think, because. You, you're not going to pop there. No one's going to pop there. They're the eighth, the tenth, and like the fourteenth most difficult according to the scorecard. But that second shot into eighteen is no bargain because it's the only one that's defended by water to the left hand side. And there's like three bunkers on the right side that are really tough to get up and down from. And no one's going to pop. So you're basically playing straight up from about sixteen in. Um, I know that. I mean, Chef, you played a shamble match at this very course where y'all, your team led by two on 16 tee box and didn't even have. Yep. Yeah. So, and that's that's yeah. where I go back to the, the course is totally scorable, right? Because you can, on 16, 17, and 18, it's not a long iron in, and depending on if the wind's blowing or not. But, I mean, you can stuff it in there and go birdie, birdie, birdie and steal a match instantly. Saw it happen with my own two eyes. I think on the front nine, the, the the two par fives are key on the front nine, in my mind. That's uh, four and six. Four is a pretty easy one, but six is all native area down the right-hand side, and it everything slopes right to left. I mean, you think of it, you're looking at it, I've got oh, 220 into a par five, that's easy. But there's a big swell right before the green, trouble right, dips off huge on the left, and it's not an easy up and down from any of those spots. So then that's another hole I think would be huge, especially in, in shamble or even all shot. Because if you're right, you're dead. How do they? How does the course play the? Uh, I guess if you want to call it native area off the fairways. Now, is it OB? Uh, can you it, hit out of it? it you it, you can hit out of it. Um, and there's there's some boulders the size of Volkswagen bugs out there. Um, so th we they're not all to get somebody to move that course. Yeah, I mean, like, I can have a power bar maybe make it out there for you since you're on Team Paradise. Um, <laughs> <laughs> JV Cobb's got a question. We're, I, I planned on answering it uh, when we when we talked about the equipment or we were going to break down the equipment orders. Um, it's a really good question. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know how much of an advantage that the participants would have to, to tell you that. So um, well, let's just break right here and ask the question. So how much of an advantage uh, do the participants that received their equipment earlier 
um, than some of the guys that had to come in off the waiting list. Uh, what type of advantage do you think that presents? Yeah, I don't think it's a huge advantage um, because, I mean, you had you had COVID golf going on this year, right? So mm-hmm. I don't know if everybody played as much as, you know, you possibly could or normally would. Um, end of the day, you still got to get up and hit shots. And for this course, it's, you know, majority of it's iron play. So it's, you know, seven irons a seven iron. And, you know, there will be some differences in yardage with it being in the desert a little bit, but it's not, you know, I don't think anyone's going to be hitting a seven iron two and a quarter. Unless, I mean, Canadan's not playing, so we don't have to worry about that yeah. one. Yeah, and that's actually good for Jeremy that he, Canadan's not walking through that door. Um, <laughs> so that, that's another uh, that's a, that's another reason that that I that I've, I made Paradise uh, the favorite. Um, so <laughs> Las Vegas is only two thousand feet. It's not like it's going to Mexico City. Yeah, exactly. I I think that you're going to see a yeah, lot of people. Job. A lot of people tinkered with their setup a lot. I know Mike, you even made a couple changes, uh, shaft related. Um, I, I think that there shouldn't be any sort of excuse for uh, not uh, being conformed or, or uh, comfortable with the equipment. Um, and sometimes in, in other, um, you know, Morgan Cups, we've seen that. So let's talk about the format. I've mentioned it before. I do have an announcement um, that JB uh, gave me earlier today as I was sort of preparing for this. Um, the blue tees at, at, uh, um, at Vegas, they run a little over 6,700 yards. Okay. The mixed, uh, tees, um, play a hair over 6,300 yards. Um, the yardage for the Morgan cup is going to be somewhere in between those two numbers. They are moving some of these tees back. You will not play the, uh, the white, the, the sort of men's mixed tees which uh, includes th- uh, three of the four par threes from the white tee boxes. Um, I personally um, said, hey, why don't you just move every one of those par threes back to, uh, to the blue tee box and let's see some carnage. Like on two would play like 171 into the wind. Let's just, you know, let's just like screw up their wedges right out of the gate when they try to hit it out of the canyon. Day one. Uh, I don't think that he, um, I don't think that he was an advocate of that uh, per se. But um, the y'all are going to play longer than the. If you think you're going to play 6,300 and win a Morgan Cup, you're mistaken. They're moving this thing back. So bring your lunch pail. Um, so let's talk about. So we we going to finish talking about the format. We've got uh, the fir- the opening match is uh, Shamble. Uh, you know, two man teams. There's four points available there. Then we get to my favorite stanza of the entire day, which is uh, y'all go back to the front nine. Maybe you change partners. Maybe you don't. We'll get in, we'll, we'll get into some pairing questions here a little bit later. Um, and you play alternate shot, which is probably the place where this could be won or lost. Last year, Paradise didn't do great in the alternate shot stanza, and they still had a mathematical chance going into Sunday singles but it was going to be a tall order. It's going to be very important for team hackers to make the most of the pops they're going to get in that, in that stanza in order to get to Sunday uh, with a chance. So um, what do y'all think about the format? I love it. I'm excited about it. Um, you know, I've played, played my fair share of shamble and played some alt shot and uh, stuff like that. Like say my club's got some events where uh, they do uh, foursome challenge, which is alt shot. So uh, I'm I'm excited. Um, I'm familiar with the formats and feel pretty good about them. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. I, I, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of agree with Mike. I'm excited about them. I got a little bit of experience in uh, shamble and and alt shot as well. But um, you know, uh, I agree with everyone else. I think that alt shot on that that last nine on Saturday is going to Play a big role in possibly who wins this thing. So, uh, you know, like I said, I'm I'm just looking forward to getting out there and getting going on it. Yeah, we call the alt shot format the the sorry man format. So when you hit it, you say sorry man. Well, yeah, we already got a got a thing in our team thread where no apologies or you get punched in the throat. <laughs> <laughs> I think that um, that alt shot is a true alt shot. It's not modified, is it? No. I think it's true. true. I think 
Yeah, I mean, if you tee off on the odds, you tee off on the odds, you tee off on the evens, you tee off on the evens. So, I mean, so like, like on one, right? I mean, it's a short par four. Someone thinks I'm going to bomb it down there. You block it right. You're OB. You're hitting mm. three off the tee. Oh, you're hitting three. Next thing you know, you're you got a you know a fifty yard pitch. To what try was the story you were telling us about, like your partner hitting like eight or nine off the tee or something? <laughs> you, like in Morgan Cup, all shot we had uh, hit three OB off the tee um, on, on, a, on a really hard par four. <laughs> Needless to say, we didn't win that hole with a nine, but it was a damn good nine. Okay. <laughs> But I mean that that's all shot right there for you. I mean you, you hit it, uh, oops, and you look at your partner and you're like, oh crap, and those nerves kind of get pumping a little bit again, you know. So that I mean you got 18 to settle in with your shamble, but if you change up and you got a new partner and you know the bomber all of a sudden loses uh, loses control, row, row, you know. Right, I would thing. just I would just recommend whoever plays with illiterate make sure that you you know totally agree with this club selection. We have been in an event together paired together during alternate shot that uh, club selection became a point of contention. And um, let's just say uh, there was words exchanged. Um. <laughs> That's a two way Dax. I mean, come on. <laughs> so let's move on. Let's move on. Let's talk about, yeah. So let's talk about the defending champions, uh, team hackers. Um, Team Hackers is uh, captained by OITW, last year's uh, MVP. Their assistant captain is Mike Yagley uh, from Cobra Golf. I'm glad to see him back uh, this year. Um, then Illiterate uh, is on that team. Parrot, hate to bogey. Uh, Baylor Bala, I guess he's a Baylor fan, so he's there. Um, JMK202 um, and Max W72. Um, when you look at this team, it's got a little bit more experience. Um, OITW definitely, uh, you know, uh, going to take uh, Canadan's place. Like I said earlier, Canadan's not walking through that door. Um, he's also not setting the pairings, which he's phenomenal at. He, he, he won a, a Morgan Cup and a granddaddy. Um, maybe some of that magic uh, from a pairing standpoint rubbed off. Um, a lot of mids on this team. Um, and men's, you know, you, you got a lot of mid cappers. They can start ham and egg and they're going to get a couple pops. Um, in, in most scenarios, they're going to be getting, I don't, I don't think there's a scenario that they don't get an alternate shot looking at it, nor, uh, in singles potentially. So, um, yeah, it, 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 it's got a, you know, it, it's a feast or famine type of deal because if, if some of these tens, um, I mean, everyone's really about the same. OITW 10.9, Mike 10.5. So a lot of 11 handicaps, so, you know, adjusted 11. Um, Baylor Brawler 11.9, Hate to Boogie 11.4. And then the two high caps on this team are, are JMK 202, 13.6. And the highest cap would be Max W72, uh, 18.7, 19. So that, I mean, you know, what do you, I mean, when you look at that chef, I mean, what, you know, what, what draws your immediate attention about that team and how they break down? I, I think like you were saying is that, you know, there's no instance where they wouldn't be getting pops for team hackers. Um, and look, I was just looking at the scorecard and double checking, you know, number one handicapped hole is hole three coming mm -hmm. off. That I think is the hardest is one of the hardest holes. Number two, the, the par three. Um, but then after that, it's 11, 15, 9, 7, and you don't you potentially don't get another pop till 8. Um, and then on the back 9, 11, 13, and maybe 15, depending on how the pairings are set up, would, would be holes to get popped on. And none of them are par 5s except for 16. That would be the only potential par 5 where I think you could almost steal a hole if you're getting pops. Um because that par five is definitely reachable. Um, and it's one of the easier to get up and down around the green. Um, but, you know, the the way the, the scorecard lays out, it doesn't set up to say, hey, if I'm going to throw a Papa Palooza out there, to say, oh, we're guaranteed, you know, X amount of holes just with based on everybody's handicap. Yeah, I mean, it, it, uh, I've made the same comment. Obviously, uh, JB's watching along. Yeah, almost everybody's around that same area. 
Um, it makes it a little bit less uh, challenging probably for uh, Alex to put these um, these pairings together unless he so it's sort of hard to throw a Papa Palooza pairing out there um, and keep them balanced. I will say during the shamble format, remember you're playing off of the low um, there. Um, so there may not be that many pops to be had. Uh, 75% of the, of, uh, of the low, everyone, you know, plays their own ball in. So yeah, everyone being around the same, uh, handicap, uh, doesn't leave a whole lot of variation from a, from a pop standpoint. Uh, yeah, I mean, by the way, Yags is a uh, 5.9. I forgot to mention them. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're, if you're looking at that, right. So number two is a five, three, number three is the one handicap. Number eight, um, is your, is your three handicap hole, and then number four handicap is 11. That's a great hole right there. Um, and 13 with that blind tee shot. You know, after that, there's not a whole lot out there to be had. Uh, yeah. With everybody being and so close, it's not going to be like, you know, you're getting pops on every hole. So I, uh, But I do like the fact that, that most of these teams in alternate shot are going to pop on two. Okay, yeah. so no matter what configuration Alex goes with or OITW, JP's probably sitting there going, um, uh, form name, Zach's form name. So no matter what configuration OITW puts them in, they're probably popping on two in alt shot. Um, they <clears throat> could steal one. And all of a sudden in a nine hole match, if they put it on the green and they're popping, they're put, you know, they're putting for, uh, you know, two net one. They could win the first two holes, and all of a sudden they're up two, and you're going into the to the you know the hardest hole in the course where they could also, depend upon how the math works out, an alt shot be popping again. So all of a sudden, if you make your pops work out for you, some of these uh, hackers teams in alt shot could be up three before uh, before Paradise like even realizes it, and then now uh, the Paradise team is down is down three with six to play. So yeah, I, I I don't mind being the 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 dog here. If you look at the the combined handicap of the team, uh, Team Hackers is eleven point eight. Paradise is eight even. Um, so you know, I think it's going to be uh, some very interesting uh, uh, pairing decisions uh, yeah. there, especially especially so in that alternate stop. That, that aggressiveness versus being too aggressive, right? Like you said, those first three holes. You could be three down after three in a in a nine hole match. That that's tough sledding uphill in in that format. So what? So Mike, you're on this team uh, that we're breaking down. We have we'll talk about their uh, sort of equipment. We'll, we've got a whole equipment section. We, we're going to talk about all this Cobra equipment greatness here in uh, in a couple segments. But um, what uh, do you think? How do you feel? I mean, I've I've listened to you and and Chef talk a little bit about the course, and I you know remember talking with you uh, last year when you went down there about the course. So I'm excited to get out there and play. Um, but uh, I mean, at the end of the day, we're we're just going to line up and we're going to go and, and we're going to hit the golf ball and try to get it in the hole. Um, and, and and you know the handicaps don't matter. Like I said, they're they they are what they are, and um, you know the everybody just kind of goes out and plays their ball, it's going to be fine. And the best team's going to win. Um, you know, so I, I'm not, <clears throat> not super worried about being kind of coming in as maybe a little bit of a dog, you know, having, having some higher handicaps on our team. I think our guys are pretty comfortable with, uh, with their equipment and their gear and, you know, feel good. And, you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens this weekend. I think it'll be, you know, either way, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. So. All right. Literally, I got a question for you. Yeah. All right. Alternate shot, your partner puts you middle of fairway par five. You got 230 left in. Your opposing team has laid up in great shape. What are you going to hit? Are you going to go for it or are you laying it up? It depends. I mean, what are we – are we down in the match? Are we match is all square. You're on the sixth hole. Um, probably, uh, probably hit hybrid and try to put it on the green. I mean, because okay. the, the hybrid – I mean, again, I think it depends on what troubles around the green, you know, too. If it, you know, there's problems left or right or whatever, it may play a little bit into that decision. But I think probably more than likely, I'll just hit the hybrid and, you know, try to throw it on. Better, Rick. I like it. 
I mean, I think you know we're we're not given we're not given a whole lot of red meat here. Literally has, has gone through every absolute cliche, you know, uh, except for maybe one hole at a time. Uh, <laughs> we're, maybe we're gonna try to stay within ourselves. <laughs> Um, you didn't say, um, I'm just going to worry about what I can control. Those are the three, like, sort of cliches that you didn't mention in that well, entire you, sort of diatribe. And I'm, I'm no selling these hot tags that you try to, you try to throw on me. So it's, it's all good. So <laughs> Aaron has got him all calmed down, man. Like, right. You know, I know. Ever since he became a dad, um, <laughs> you know, ever since he became a dad. So we're going to break down. Let's talk about paradise. Um, you know, Paradise, man, they look really, really good on paper. Uh, so, so Jeremy comes back a full stroke, uh, below his handicap last year as he entered the Morgan Cup. They have the little rat with him. Um, he can, he can golf his ball around. Kentucky golfer, you come in at a 4.7. Uh, Todd, um, I'm not going to mention, I, you know, it's uh, I, I, all these n numbers at the end of like someone's form name is like one of my top pet peeves. Like, let's just like get a name and like stick with it instead of like all these numbers. But anyway, Todd comes in at a 5.6. Uh, Duffer Waldorf, uh, 8.6. Um, Marmil, um, with a bunch of numbers again, uh, 8.9. OU Magic. Uh, yeah, there's not a whole lot of magic going on in Oklahoma and Norman, hey, hey, but maybe he don't bring that up. Don't bring that up. Hey. Will bring some magic uh to the Morgan Cup at a nine point four, and uh, V Dub, um, he comes into the high cap at seventeen one. Low, that's a low, um, sort of combined cap here, um. We've seen, you know, only one event I saw lower, um, which was the strict on event that, that you were in, where, where everyone in that event, all six of the THPers were single digits. Um, it's not, there's not, not, there's not a whole lot not to like about them. I think that he, there's a bunch of different options that Jeremy has. Um, you know, his Papa Palooza option is not terrible on paper. He, he probably feel comfortable uh, sending that out. Uh, in a shamble, I'm talking about OU and V-Dub. Um, he probably is comfortable sending them out together in a shamble to, to sort of negate maybe one of these uh, teams from Hackers' uh, ability to pop. And then, you know, he could probably just take the rest of the six and sort of mix them in a hat and pull it out. I think that he's got more uh, flexibility, more options with his pairings. They – um on paper probably uh have a little bit more of a complete game um so there's not a whole lot to, to like but i will say this if they don't take advantage of the alter the alternate shot format favors them it should favor them on paper they on paper probably are a little bit uh, better ball strikers people usually don't get the single digits uh, being horrible ball strikers if they don't take advantage of it and somehow hacker survives this stanza and gets the singles with a chance then we, we you and i uh saturday night chef are talking about a, a totally different deal and and it could be anybody's cup so i like them what do you think chef all right so if you want to crown them crown them <laughs> They are who we thought they are. All right. Oh. Paradise. My man, JD Talks, my roommate at the at my first Morgan Cup, right? We played Big Spoon, Little Spoon. It was great. Dude's fantastic. He's been working on his game since last year. Last year was just we're just gonna throw last year away, put it off to the side. It doesn't matter, right? It's all about this year. Between my one JD Talks, OU Magic, Boomer Sooner. And Little Rat's short game, dude, I, I like where they sit as a team, right? Uh, I also like the potential pairing of, like, a Little Rat and V-Dub Tex for an alternate shot. With that short game from Little Rat, keeping it in play, getting pops, that offsets a little bit. I like that setup. I also like, you know, his options for shamble. With everybody being around the same cap, they're probably playing similar yardages. I think there's a lot of familiarity with their games. I, I like the consistency with them. I think I think right. that they could go, they could, you know, bury illiterate on day one. Illiterate could be zero and two before, like, I even hit the snooze button, man. Right before before you even step off the plane. Got the baby. Oh, yeah. 
and I need to turn down too. So he's down too, and he's betting on the ponies down there, the electric ponies. <laughs> don't do that. I, don't, I think we're we're having to like quarantine. Like we can't even go and enjoy Vegas for what it is. You, so. you can have someone go place a bet for you. <laughs> go place a look. Bet. Um. So let's let's see what some people are talking before I turn mm -hmm. it over to Kentucky golfer. Um. Is Paradise the lowest handicap? I, I don't know that. Maybe. Uh, since I've since I've been like sort of breaking down odds, I think that's the lowest combined cap I've seen. Uh, eight um, is, is 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 pretty is pretty low. Um, yeah, Chris also agrees it looks pretty stacked. They've got skills from Albert here. Everyone is in love with uh, two tickets to Paradise. Um, I will say this that you know sometimes sometimes cats don't travel, right? I mean, I, I don't know where some of these cats play. Um, you know, you could, you right. I mean, you could, you know, you could be a six on a course that doesn't, that's basically a goat track, doesn't offer a lot of resistance. And then you go in and, and you look in and you, you're starting to try to play crap out of a canyon, right? You're yeah. screwing up a wedge, you're doing whatever. Um, so we'll, we'll have to see. Um, I mean, I did do a little research to figure out how people were playing coming in. I think that Jeremy's playing pretty well. OITW due to COVID hasn't been playing a whole lot. We talked earlier about how a literate game seems, and, and this is his word, shambled. Um, yeah, I looked up your gin scores, man. Um, Especially yeah, maybe little, those last couple that were put in there. <laughs> last couple were put in, of course. Um, so – uh, Kentucky golfer, uh, you know, you're on Team Paradise. What, how are you feeling? Now, to steal the quote from uh, Kentucky's basketball coach, John Calipari, I like my team. Um, I kind of agree that uh, the, the lower side of the caps, short games and everything like that could, could be a big factor here. Um, I wouldn't say that low caps are always the best Ball striker, I did go with the speed zone irons for a reason. So we're gonna talk about that uh, in a second. But you know, uh, not quite sure about the greens. Uh, putting could be a big deal. Um, I like my team. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna go out there and try to make up them pops as quick as possible, and uh, hopefully come out ahead at the end. All right. I love it. Let me let me pose this question. I, I posed a question to Mike earlier, so I, I got to pose a question to you, right? Exactly the same thing he said. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> you, get, you, get, you, get a you get a different hole. You get a different hole. All right. Hole seven, playing 195 yards, pins back left, right? You got say no wind. Are you hitting for the fat of the green, or are you going pin chasing back there? I wish I could say I could go pin chasing, but <laughs> match is all square. I am uh I'm gonna aim and swim thing and hope it goes straight. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, 195 yards. I don't know if you can go pin chasing from 195. Can you? Uh, Dude, you're man. At our you level, anyway. Go, you go pin hunting from anywhere, baby. You go pin hunting from 275. I mean, I usually go pin hunting on every swing, so I guess that's gonna be my answer, but. There you, you know, go. Guess, there you know, go. Part, part, partner could have a little bit of say in that. I guess it, it, like Mike said, it just depends on where the other team is. And, and, uh, but no, I'm, uh, I'm swinging for the fences, man. The soft so, what's more forgiving, Kentucky golfer? Um, your irons or your beard? Well, I just, I just, I am my guys. Uh, I guess it was yesterday or the day before. Uh, I just cut five inches off of it, and uh, wow. so my wife, I guess she was getting tired of it. I asked her to trim it up for me, and five inches were gone. I wasn't too happy about it, but it'll be back next next couple weeks. Are, are you taking a bottle of whiskey or bourbon with you, or are you going to rely on like what's Probably. On? I'm from Kentucky, man. You got to drink that Kentucky bourbon, so uh, I'll have a couple. Okay, there we go. Let's talk about this awesome equipment. Um, man, this, this Cobra line from top to bottom is awesome, isn't it? Um, I've hit, I've had a chance to hit a lot of the stuff in the uh, HQ, THP HQ. Um, the driver's excellent. 
Um, I don't think I've hit any of the woods or the, the hybrids, but I've hit the forge tech iron. Uh, they're really, really good. So are the wedges. Um, all from top to bottom, this is a stout offering from Cobra and y'all are very lucky, uh, to, to be treated like uh, tour players here with a bag from top to bottom. Um, if you look at the club selection for both teams, hackers went with, uh, forge tech. Yeah. Yeah. Hackers went with forge tech from everyone, everyone, including, uh, including JMK202 with a one-link forge tech. I love that selection, by the way. Um, Paradise, a little bit more of a mixed bag. Um, you see three uh, people take speed zone, including our guest today, Kentucky golfer. Um, I mean, second, second lowest handicap on the team, bypasses the forge tech and takes the speed zone. Why? Well, that's, a, that's, a, that's opposite of last year, though. Remember that? Yeah, I mean the F nine irons was the were the irons that made that, that won the Morgan Cup last year. Um when when uh team hackers to a man all took them. So yeah. Yeah, but you can't go wrong with any of that Cobra gear. I mean not. Mm -mm. I I'll tell you the main reason why um one, I just I hit them really, really well. I hit them a lot higher. Uh even though people might say they're strong lofted. Still held green, still could spin them back. Um, I'm not a professional golfer, man. I'll take any forgiveness I can get anywhere I can get it. Um, problem I had with the uh, forged X was they were too light for me, and uh, I just I seemed to duck hook everything I hit with them, uh, even with the same even with the same shaft I have in the speed zones. Uh, and we had a little bit of um, I don't know what the right word is, but uh, I didn't want to have to have them all, you know, modified. I didn't want to have to have hot milk put in them and all that stuff at the time. So uh, since I hit the speed zone really well, uh, that's what I went with. You didn't do like the full hot milk, 13 and a half wraps on bottom, 12 and a half wraps on top. No, I think JB made it pretty clear from the get go this year that uh, we wasn't going to wasn't going to go that route. Because <laughs> there's not enough tape in the world, man. Well, right. apparently Yags, Yags has the speed zone. Of course, I didn't have the club selection for the uh, assistant captains when I did the write-up, so I didn't know what irons uh, the Little Rat and Yags had. And um, so, yeah, so, so Hackers does have uh, speed zone. I think they're both great options, to be honest with you. Um, man, I love that Forge Tech. Uh, I spent some time with it. Uh, at a, actually, it was in JB's back the uh, last time we went out, and um, man, it was so good. I, I, lo I love this yeah. one. That is a legit iron. Yeah, it is legit. The driver's great, too. I hit a literate driver um, also. Um, a litter, you're going with a linked gun metal on that driver? Yeah, so I'm still playing. I think somebody asked that on the forum earlier, but to answer mm -hmm. whoever's question that was, um, I've the only thing I changed on the driver was I put uh, I put the uh, Cobra Connect Arcos grip on there, um, so I could track the track the stats with it. Uh, but yeah, still going with the Gunmetal Seven F Five um, that that Danny Lee fit me into earlier this year at uh, Distance Bash. So one of the things I noticed this year, on, I mean, normally when you make the Morgan Cup order, you don't have time to tinker with your setup but due to covid and the morgan cup being pushed back a lot of y'all had y'all's equipment for a while right um there was a lot of tinkering like i, I it was like oh yeah there's i think somebody changed shafts like five times in the driver trying to trying to figure some things out um do you think that that helps or hurts i mean you said that you, you know, Kentucky golfer, you said that you didn't want to mess with it, didn't want to have to hot metal anything, didn't want to have to alter the clubs very much, um, which obviously some of the other participants don't feel the same way of not having to mess with it. They, they mess with it a lot. So do you think that's going to be sort of an issue um, uh, as they get acclimated to the equipment? I Anybody can take that. <laughs> not, not on Paradise, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, there, there, not to interrupt, uh, Chef, but there wasn't a whole lot of of uh, tinkering on Team Paradise. There, there was a shaft change in the driver, and 
And uh, I think Marmel may have had some issues with uh, with his iron shafts and and uh, but got those squared away. And, and other than that, I, I don't really think maybe other than a driver shaft, uh, that was about all that was switched on our side. Yeah, I mean, you can tinker all you want, right? I and mean, I think this in to Kentucky golfer, he chose the speed zone irons. It goes back to what we were talking about on the forum this week, where there's a, a topic about is forgiving, not precise. Right. And you see where Jose and uh, Yags both have speed zone irons in their back. I mean, there's an answer right there. You take the forgiveness where you can. You know, maybe, yeah. uh, you know, when you inter- internet golf it maybe a little too much. It, uh, Jose's set looks like such a phenomenal, like, THP combo set. Like, it just really does. Like, I- I'm surprised that we didn't see more um, of that from from the participants where they went. I don't know that uh, we could order, like, a combo set. Like, we had to order stock. Oh, maybe I couldn't. You know, it, we, we couldn't order, like, um, up, upcharged gear. Um, when we made our order so that you know i don't i don't know that uh i do think jb mentioned like you could order like a speed zone four iron if you wanted but um i don't know i may be mistaken maybe you could have ordered like a combo set if you really wanted to but i didn't really have a whole lot of time to decide it was kind of uh you got selected to go or and then you had to make an order pretty quick turnaround there yeah you had like 30 minutes to make your order right right or i was going to try to take your spot i mean i was just throwing it out there (laughs) But so no, what else about the, the equipment? I mean, so, one of the things I want to say about the gears, um, the irons, the, the transition to the irons have been pretty good. Um, you know, and the wedges I actually have, have been chipping really well with the uh, with the 58, uh, getting along with that real well. Um, I did get a raw 54 um, slipped into my bag. I've uh, never played a raw wedge before and um, really liked the look of it. Um, and uh, the distances that I need to get from the wedges, I'm still getting um, a couple of the guys. I think when we were looking to to uh, make the order uh, for the new guys that got on the team, um, they mentioned, um, you know, to go with like a 50 degree wedge instead of the set uh, gap wedge. And so, um, you know, that's a first for me as far as in my, you know, because I normally play a, uh, like a set gap wedge. And so I took the advice of the guys and went with a 50. And so far, I really, uh, really like that as well. So. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the, I, I would say probably the most surprising piece of gear for me is the, um, the wedges. I, 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 I never played anything outside of a wedge prior. So, um, <laughs> um, you know, this was a, this was really, really nice surprise. The three wood, um, I did make a shaft change in strictly just because of weight. And I had an extra 85 gram uh, shaft laying around that, uh, that Danny had, had sent to me. Um, so, uh, put that in there. And then uh, the hybrid, you know, I, I like it as well. It's it's a monster off the tee. So, what? Let me ask you two guys, Kentucky golfer and illiterate, favorite club in the bag today? Three wood. Club. That three wood. That three wood is is monster, man. I'm telling you. And I and I have the standard uh, three wood. I don't have the the big tour or the tour or uh, you know the big tour or the tour. Uh, I just have the standard fourteen. And half degree three wood, I think it is, and uh, the Cobra fairway woods are st- crazy sneaky long, are they not? I, I made the comment early on after I got the equipment uh, playing with some guys from THP that that it would be really tough for me to switch out the three wood and three hybrids that I originally had, but they're they're out. But the hybrid and the three wood to me have been the biggest surprise. Yeah, I, I would say probably the fifty eight's been my favorite club so far. Um, out of the group uh the three wood is a little bit of a surprise um with the lighter shaft i didn't get along with it as much but when i put the heavier shaft back in um i mean i was seeing distances at least according to arcos i'm seeing distances really close to the driver um you know with it which is uh, which is pretty surprising but i think some of that may have to do with uh, the t that i'm hitting the three wood on at my course as well but um but yeah, the the three wood solid um, to KY golfers um, point, and uh, like I said, my probably my favorite club is the fifty eight degree wedge. All all that gear is great, by the way, and um, I also do like the dark finish of their wedges uh, hold up really well. So uh, no one mentioned that, but I got, well, I, love, I love it. Unfortunately, they was an option. Did I did, the I, time, did so. I did I did I did I like forget the rules of the game? I should have looked this up <laughs> anyway. I've hit um, – Alex has had uh, 
had some of those wedges in his bag, and I, and I was thoroughly impressed, not only with the wedge, but um, how well that finish uh, held up. Yeah, they, uh, were, for they were supposed to be released uh, before the original club selection, but due to COVID, they kind of got pushed back a, a few months, so uh, they, they ended up not being an option. So I think they uh-huh. kept that kept that's, that that's, same rule for Mike and them whenever they got that, That's going to come in handy, especially coming off the rocks, where someone's going to come out and not ruin that black finish on a wedge. Right. You're going to be glad that you had crime, I guess. Um, so let's about to wrap this up. Uh, so I'm going to, I went through, see if we make sure that we answered all the questions. So if, you, if you're still watching and you've got some questions, let's hit that before chef and I, uh, make a prediction. Um, one, who's the unknown wild cards in your mind that can sway, uh, this event? Well, I mean, I think that, um, some of the guys that we haven't seen play in an event, uh, like Todd, Todd J, um, you know, if if he plays to that to that number, that's going to be uh, you know that's going to be stout. Um, I think that could be a wild card. OU Magic, if he you know, I think could also be another wild card if he if he plays uh, a little bit better than a nine on on hackers. A lot of those guys are known. I think that you're going to have to get a solid performance. I hate to say it, I know he's sitting there. I think that a litter is going to have to bring his lunch pail. Uh, and, and, and carry some water, especially in that singles match, especially if Alex puts him out first, um, because I know that his mantra is going to be anybody, anytime, anywhere. So maybe uh, Alex decides to put him uh, in that in that first match on Sunday to try to set the tone. Um, also, look, those two high caps for uh, hackers, JMK and Max, um, they come in and they play well and uh, don't uh, don't implode or, or or succumb to the Morgan Cup pressure. They they could be also wild cards. Um, other questions. Let's see. Who is each person secretly rooting for on their own team? What does that mean? I think you're rooting for everybody. Right? I'm rooting for all my teammates. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Uh, Matt Dawson has a comment about the bags uh, being awesome. Uh, yeah, the bag, I, I haven't seen the bags, but uh, but they always have great um, Dude, they're sick. gear. They are sick. There is a thread uh, that show off your Morgan Cup bag. Um, you can go check it on the THP forum. Lots of pictures there. Sweet. Um, let me let me take a second to plug some of the other contests that are going on. Um, I think Team Hackers is having a, a, a contest that gets the pairing. Do y'all know the pairings? Um, Do you know your yeah. pairings yet? We, we know the pairings. Um, we know who we're going to play with in Shamble and, and Alt Shots. Um, I think Alt Shot, there, there could be some wiggle room there. But uh, I think the Shambles, uh, Shambles setup is pretty solid right now. Um, but, uh, yeah, there is a contest um, that we're going to be doing. There's a exclusive piece of uh, team mem- memorabilia. Um, fear, the, fear the eggplant and, um, you know, uh, pick the pick the pairings. And then, you know, I'm, I'm actually kind of disappointed that uh, I think I saw earlier only one person that picked me to have the first natural birdie. So I'm planning on uh, plan on trying to trying to win that part uh, if there's a tiebreaker involved for somebody. So, I mean, I can't I mean, how do you forgive them? I mean, you know, you're, you've been poor mouth in your game. It's not like you've been striking. Ball striking has not been. Uh, at a premium here lately. So listen, the game the game has been uh, has been kind of like really good or really bad. Like for instance, this past weekend at our member member tournament, I had never birdied seven and fourteen, and I finally checked those off the list. But it was the other holes that uh, that was my you know my downfall. But uh, I seemed to play really well in the the, the tough holes, uh, which are the one you know the one and two handicap holes at our course, and then uh, you know not so well in some of the easier holes. So. I, I was speaking of this eggplant thing. I'm not. I'm no selling the eggplant thing. I thought it was like funny, like the first couple times. Um, but now I feel like it's it's just it, it, it's just overdone. You know, like well, yeah, the, the yeah. eggplant is very healthy, and uh, Team Hackers is here to spread the wealth. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've got everybody's question. I, I don't know is. is Paradise running any sort of uh, other contest? Of course, you there, have to pick. There will contest. there will be a contest coming. Uh, stay tuned for that. And uh, I'm not exactly sure when we're gonna throw that out there, but it is coming. 
But if it involves all Kentucky right. bourbon, you count me in, all right? Anytime, so, man. So let's wrap it up. Redacted. I love it. Uh, that's my partner at the Grand Attic. Um, well, I know who y'all were going to pick. So this is the point of the deal where where Chef and I would make a pick. And, and so would Mike if he was not playing uh, in this thing. So, Chef, I'll yield the floor to you. What is your prediction? All right. Hey, well, even number year, and I kind of alluded to earlier, I'm sticking with my man, J.D. Talks, Team Paradise. I think Little Rat is hungry and tired of taking that smack off Yags. Yags has an Iowa He's State definitely guy. Definitely hungry. I can promise and you that. He, the Iowa State Cyclones beat my Sooners a couple weeks ago or last weekend. Um, OU Magic is on this team. V-Dub Tex is my sleeper for kind of an MVP status right now on Team Paradise. Um, but I, I like the consistency of the handicaps and where they're all kind of looped in there. A um, little reminiscent of 2018, and uh, I'm going Team Paradise. Okay, so I'll make my pick. Um, I made Paradise a favorite. Um, that line has moved down a little bit based on what the THP public uh, did. But right now, 54% of the picks are on hackers. Um, they have more experience. And, oh, yes, J.B. Cobb, the eggplant has go-away heat with me. Uh, x pop type heat. But um, – <laughs> I'm gonna, you know what? I, I I'm gonna, I'm gonna give me, give me a literate and and the and the hurt neck and the game in shambles and every oh. excuse known to man. Give me hackers. I'm gonna take hackers here to survive the alternate shot stanza. They get out of it alive and then they ham and egg when they're getting pops on Sunday and they come from behind and win the Morgan Cup. That is your pick, team hackers, to win this thing. So. For Kentucky golfer, for illiterate, for chef. Oh, by the way, chef and I will be back at some point on Saturday to talk to the captains as they break down what happened during the Saturday matches before they issue their pairings for Sunday singles. Uh, same bat time. Uh, probably going to be, uh, well, they're three hours ahead of us. Be on the lookout for my post on the forum giving you the exact time, but you'll be, they'll be live with us uh, Saturday night. Anybody have any final thoughts before I end the broadcast? Fear the eggplant, my friend. Go away. <laughs> nah, I'm going to pass on the eggplant, but uh, I just want to throw a huge thank you out there to JB and Golfer Gal, even though she's not going to be there in person this year. Kind of sad. I know we were all looking forward to meeting her and to Cobra Puma Golf for uh, a little bit of excitement in, in this crappy year we've had of 2020. And, uh, can't wait to get out there and meet all the guys and get this thing going. Yeah, I agree. Um, thank you to Cobra Puma Golf for uh, for hooking us up, making us feel like tour players for the weekend. And uh, you know, thanks JB Golfer Gal for everything they do behind the scenes um, and, and getting this thing put together. And uh, you know, appreciate Dax and Chef and uh, KY Golfer coming on here tonight, spending you know an hour of their own time to to come and hype up this event for us and make it a little bit more fun, a little bit more interesting. So. Um, you know, looking forward to meeting everybody this weekend and let's get it. Let's do it. Can't wait. Thanks guys. And we are out.